So uh, this is the ser a series of trainings that we're doing um, around supporting the title effort, title grant effort. Um, it's all focused around looking at data, including data and measurements in the grant process. Um, today's session is focusing on helping you all understand what the accountability measures are at this for the state. Um, so the Department of Education has a series of accountability measures that are used to measure school performance and how schools are doing throughout the state. And certainly it's one type of measurement that you might want to include and consider as you're looking for um, opportunities for grant um, grant applications. We will be doing other webinars, and I'll talk about them more uh, towards the end of the session. Um, but there'll be many more, in several more, in terms of understanding um, more of the specific data that um, is included that's used to determine accountability. And I'll point that out as we go forward. Um, but you know, we a couple of thoughts about today. One is this is our first in the series, so we absolutely welcome and appreciate any feedback either during or after the session. We want to make these as valuable as possible for all of you, and so please give us comments. We always, you know, our effort is always to make sure that the next webinar is, is improved from the prior one based on feedback. We really take it to heart, so please offer it um, either today or later. The, today's presentation, we hopefully are shooting for about an hour, a little shorter with the presentation, a chance for some questions at the end and throughout. Um, we've divided it up into first helping you understand what are what is the account what are the accountability measures, what is the accountability system. So we'll kind of hope, hopefully walk through those with you so you understand what those measurements are. We want to talk to you a little bit about how you can get access to that data. So for those of you who aren't familiar with things like iPlatform or iReport, um, we want you to understand it so that you know it's a resource for you to, to look at that information and hopefully gain insights into your school's performance that can inform your grant process. Um, we will spend some time considering some examples. So we've actually got four or five scenarios that we'll walk you through to say, you know, here's something I'm thinking as a as a title um, grant, grant writer in my school district. You know, here's something I might be thinking about where would I go look for that in these data sources around accountability measures? Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about, more about what the next trainings are coming up and you know, have another chance for questions and answers. So hopefully this is a good um, structure for you and hopefully it'll make sense. And uh, again, please stop us anytime. Can't say it enough to ask questions. Um, for some of you who have seen some of these other iPlatform uh, trainings, some of this will look familiar, uh, but I wanna make sure we're all up to speed. Um, the other thing that I want to point out, and I'm going to, um, I'll let Christine um, um, put a chat in and, and uh, Jacqueline cut me off if uh, there's something that someone else wants to add in. Um, thanks for putting your hand up, Christine. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is, is how the, this accountability system has been created within the Department of Education. Um, so there's really kind of three different segments to this. One is how do we get the, the data about students? Um, the second is kind of what are the, the assessment data that's used um, that is one of the primary sources for the accountability? And then what's the accountability system itself? And so again, part of the whole structure of this presentation um, and this, the web, the PowerPoint, uh, the slideshow itself, you should will be made available to you. And if it's actually, um, Jacqueline, maybe you can get it out of the workshop and webinars folder and put it in the chat if you haven't already. Um, but um, part of the goal of this is that there are links throughout the presentation that'll get you to resources. So I'm not expecting you to become experts in any of this right now, but hopefully it gives you information about and familiarity about where to go to get more information uh, and to be able to make sense of it because you have a better understanding of what that information is all about. In that light, um, there are a series of data collections that the department has throughout the year that we collect some important data. And it's data that at least the, the states deemed important, important from an accountability perspective because that data is used to determine accountability of schools. So for example, we have data that comes through the I4C system, and I4C is a student level collection that all schools in the state submit data to the department through this I4C system. Um, soon it's gonna be re replaced by um, index uh, as kind of the next, not replaced, but um, added to. Um, but we get data, for example, at the end of the year for every school of how many students, for each student, how many days might have they been suspended in school or out of school. Um, we get information for each student about which students are on free and reduced lunch, meaning that they're kind of living in a, in a higher, a lower poverty situation. All that information is collected, um, and then it's combined with information in the second area that we get about the assessment test. Um, so for each uh, student in the state in grades three through eight and 11, they take a state assessment in math and ELA. Um, in several, three of those grades, they take it in science. 
Students also take the access exam, the WEED access, which is for English language learners. And so there's a series of assessment tests uh, students are taking. That access test is done for all grades K through 12. That data, the I4C, the student level data that we collect, the assessment data that we collect, all that data is merged, combined to come up and to be used as part of an accountability system. That data is used for several reasons. It's used for determining how much schools get funded. It's used for lots of reasons. But one important reason is to determine school accountability, which schools are struggling, which schools are doing well. And so that's what this third section describes. It describes the accountability system of how that data is pulled together to determine whether a school um, is struggling or whether a school is doing well. And we'll talk more about that you know, as we go forward in a couple of these slides. Each one of these slides, in the slide, each one of these links brings you to information about that. So this link brings you information about the data dictionary, which includes the information that we collect for, from all the schools uh, for that each student. Um, this link brings you to the assessment page at the department's website, which tells you a lot more about the assessment information that, that's contained and, and how are the assessments conducted, what grades are they conducted, who, you know, who's performing the assessment for, you know, for example, 11th grade math and science is by the college board for the SAT. Um, or math and ELA, science is done by Cambium. So all that description is, is on that assessment page. And then the, finally, this accountability brings us to the accountability page on the department's website, which has a lot of information about state accountability. And we'll talk again more about this as we go forward. Um, but that is kind of the world that defines this information. And the reason we're talking today about it is because if the state believes that this, this accountability, which it does, that these accountability um, um, things are uh, important, then uh, it's um, then it's that's relevant as you're thinking about grants to say if this is something that the state's using for accountability, this may be something that I want to consider as I'm, as I'm creating a grant. I'm going to pause for a quick question because I've been seeing some flashing on my screen. Um, Jacqueline, are we have are we okay? Any questions or do I need to change anything? And Jacqueline, you might be muted up um, if you're talking. I'm going to check my chat and just to make sure it looks like looks like Jacqueline's been sharing some things. So I think we're okay. I'm going to keep going. Um, Jacqueline, at some point, if you can, just um, unmute yourself and let me know that things are going okay. I'd appreciate that too. Everything is great. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. So, so let's now dive into this accountability system and let's get a better understanding of, um, oops, I didn't mean that way. Uh, I want to. That's my slide here. Okay, so as I mentioned before, and I apologize because I think this didn't we make this a little smaller because it looks like it got off the screen. Let's start your slideshow again. Um, so as I mentioned before, the accountability system helps determine which schools are struggling and which schools are doing well. Um, for those struggling schools, they, they're identified. The accountability system has them identified in three different classifications. It's called CSI, CSI, and ATSI. CSI are the schools that across the entire student population, and they're kind of described here, all the students in the school, they're not, they're really, they're struggling as a school. Um, they are the bottom, the lowest performing 5% of schools in the state. These are Title I schools. Um, coming up forward this next year, they'll actually be doing these for all schools, not just for Title I schools, but as part of a state CSI process, they'll be identifying schools also at the state level as CSI. Um, and so those schools are struggling across um, these accountability indicators, which we'll look at in a minute, um, for all the students in the state or in their school. Um, TSI means that they you have got a subgroup. A subgroup means special education students, limited English proficient students, um, free and reduced students. And that subgroup of students, they are struggling um, over a course of two years, where throughout the entire state, that group was at the lowest 5%. Um, across the entire state for that group of students. So that school, for example, their special education students were performing low, the, in the bottom 5% of schools two years in a row. If so, then that special education population would be identified as part of a, a, a TSI designation for your school, for, for a given school. Um, and then finally, ATS um, indicates that you've got a, another a subpopulation, again, free and reduced. Uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's one of the ethnic and racial um, subgroup, um, that that group performed as low as these overall CSI schools. Um, so again, it's, 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 but just for one year. And so any, any um, so for the year that we've identified schools at the bottom 5%, if there's any subgroup in any other school that's also performing at that same level, they're identified for ATS. So again, 
CSI means all the students in the school, that whole school is kind of struggling. TSI and ATS means one subgroup. Again, you know, might be racial subgroup, free and reduced, um, LEP, that type of thing. Um, there's a lot more information about these schools, but we have a short period of time, so I'm not going to, about the, these classifications, um, but we have a short period of time, so I'm going to continue on. But if you've got questions, please, again, stop. Um, there are a handful of resources that will help you best understand this accountability system, the classification of CSI, um, TSI, and ATS. Um, so this screen, this page will help give you access to those resources. Um, Kier Young, this is kind of a lot of this work behind these slides that are great work that she's done. Um, but one is an overview, overview of the accountability system. This is a short, I think it's, a, I'll click on it, but I think it's probably like a four page or a six page, eight page um, document that just helps describe what are the components of the accountability system. Um, it talks about um, long-term goals and we'll talk about some of these as we go forward too, but there are goals that every school should have in terms of the percentage of students who are proficient. So again, as you're thinking about a grant, you know, you, you can be using these goals to help you understand if your school is a school that needs to, that is below, uh, you know, one of these goals, that that's one reason you might want to focus on a grant to, to uh, move yourself closer to one of these goals. Um, I won't go through all this, this is that slide I just showed you, um, but realize that this document gives you some more insights into understanding the accountability system. There's actually an online course. Um, so if you want to take a short online course, um, this is just a link to how you register in Canvas. Um, but here Young has actually put together a course for you to kind of walk through some of this information and get a better understanding of the accountability system itself. Um, there are some videos. So this actually links to a little YouTube page. This is open to the public. Um, and these are short one minute videos on understanding ESSA and ESSA is the accountability system um, and what's changed and what are some of the rules. Um, so that's a great resource for you as well. Um, and then there also is just the homepage of the accountability system. So this is the homepage. It's the same homepage actually on the other link that just brings you into the department's main website to, to talk about um, accountability. And then the last thing I should mention is this title itself. If you click on this, it also will link you to, um, to, to a good document or resource. Um, this is actually the state plan. And so this plan, you don't have to read 116 pages, um, but this plan does um, bring some highlights about the accountability plan. Um, we will talk through, for example, some of the indicators that you're looking at, like graduation rate or achievement or growth, um, what those goals are and what those measurements are, they're defined in this plan quite a bit. So this is one place that you could look as well. So I'm gonna close these down and come back over, oops, to the presentation. And we'll continue on, but realize that there's a whole host of resources that will help you better understand um, the different accountability components. But let's dive into kind of what I think is important, what we want to kind of communicate today in terms of the actual indicators and components of the accountability system. So when every school is, is reviewed to determine whether they might be CSI, ATS, or um, TSI, they're, they're, we consider basically four different indicators. Uh, for for elementary school and then and middle schools and then four indicators that are set for high schools. On the left here, we're listing those indicators. Um, so achievement and English language proficiency are two indicators that we consider across all schools because those are applicable whether you've got a you know third grader or eleventh grader or whether you've got a kindergartner or first grader who's um, learning English. Um, so that information is valuable and important for all schools. Um, the other thing I want to point out, all these indicators, and we'll look at it again a little bit as we go forward, they're valuable regardless of whether you're identified as a CSI, an ATS, a TSI, or a school in good standing. This information and these indicators are things that hopefully you will consider as you're thinking about title grants, regardless of whether you are uh, one of the schools that have been identified or one of the schools that are considered good standing. And we can, I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but you'll see like there are indicators like achievement. There are many, many schools in this state who, um, you know, all schools obviously can continue to improve achievement, but there are many schools beyond that, the 5% the are struggling the most, who are really struggling with achievement. Um, same thing might be with growth. Um, so regardless of whether you're identified or not, you'll see these resources that we're going to show are valuable for you uh, in helping come up with areas that you think might be uh, areas that you need improvement for, um, for grants. Um, 
So achievement and English language proficiency are for all schools, uh, elementary level, there's what's called the growth factor and growth looks at students growth from one year to the next. We'll actually, again, we'll look at some of this later, um, but this helps identify, are your students growing in terms of their academics? Uh, it's only, it requires two years of data. Um, since the state assessment has gone through grades three through eight, we have growth factors for grades four through eight because we need at least two years. So we can't do it in grade three, we start doing it in grade four. So schools, your supports that you're looking at for schools um, that include grades four through eight, you'll want to look at the growth factor and kind of see if that's an indicator of areas that you might want to look for uh, support. Equity, equity require, equity takes a look, it's very much similar to growth, but it, it overemphasizes the need to grow students who are really struggling. So students who are um, in the, when you take a state assessment, there's four levels. Level one is, is the lowest. Level four means you're, you're kind of proficient and you're feeling you're, you're lined up for college and career in terms of your academic learning. Equity says for those folks who are ones or twos, um, we need to focus on them a little bit more. And so it's a growth factor that emphasizes those students. You have to have enough students in your school to be able to calculate an equity. So not all schools can calculate, calculate an equity factor. Um, so for some of you, you may see that the, that value doesn't exist. At the high school level, we use graduation rate and we use college and career readiness. So again, two areas that the state deems very important in determining school success. Um, graduation rate, as a matter of fact, if you're below a certain graduation rate, um, you are automatically identified as a, as a struggling school. Um, so that's another area of focus. Um, college and career readiness is an indicator that the state uses. Um, it's an indicator for each student in grade 12. Um, and it identifies if that student is identified or, or deemed ready for college and career. And it does it by saying, is that does that student have at least two of, I think it's about 10 or 11 different attributes that they've achieved. If they've achieved at least two of those, then they should be on the right track towards college and career. Those types of indicators include things like um, an AP course. So if they got a certain score on an AP course, uh, then you know that's an indicator that they're moving in the right direction for college. Um, if they have a certificate or a completion of a CTE, specific CTE program, um, that means they're on track to college or career. Um, so understanding that you know, many of your students don't achieve that is an area that, again, you might want to say, what can we do from a grant perspective to help change that? In addition to these, which are used to determine that CSI, ATS, and TSI designation, there are some other indicators that are part of that larger ESSA plan. So I just put these out there and we're gonna, we'll actually come back to these at a later uh, webinar, not today, but I'll mention, actually, we're gonna come back to one of them today too. Um, but I do wanna mention to these regardless so that you're aware of them. One is suspensions and expulsions. We have very low expulsion rates in New Hampshire. Um, so although that's a, a indicator that I think the federal government requires all states to track, for the most part, that's not gonna be an area that you know, schools have a high um, number of expulsions. Suspensions, however, um, that varies quite a bit from school to school and some schools do still rely on the suspension policies and have a significant number of suspensions. So again, that's an indicator that's important to the department. So it might be an indicator that you'd wanna look at in terms of applying for grants. Educator experience and certification is also an indicator that the plan has us um, publish every year. And so looking at what percentage of your teachers are experienced, what percentage of your teachers are, are certified in the area they're teaching, those are other indicators that we'll, we'll see that you might wanna look at. And maybe that's, again, an area that you might wanna focus on uh, for uh, some of your title grants. And then finally, um, college and career, there's some additional indicators. In addition to what's used here for the federal accountability, there are some indicators such as post-secondary enrollment uh, or dropout information that might also be areas that you could look at uh, as you're considering grant measures. So all of these include indicators or measurements, um, actual indicate values that you might wanna consider as you're thinking about ways to improve your school and to apply for grants. So what I want to do now is talk a little bit about how you see that data and how you get access to it. Um, there are several public websites that you can look at, and there's also going to be some private data that you can get to as well, um, secure data. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about both of those. Um, again, we only have, you know, an hour today, so um, we're not going to be able to go into, in, you know, deep dive in terms of getting to this data. But this should give you at least a flavor and make sure you understand here are some tools and then spend some time later finding out more about what ways you access it. So let's take a look at these different um, tools that you can get get to. Um, iPlatform is the first one that if you haven't heard it, if you haven't been on one of my other webinars where we've talked about iPlatform, you should. Um, iPlatform is a series of really several applications that the department's created. It's all public access data, no login required, um, but provides you good information of indicators that again, might be valuable for you. There's three main components to iPlatform. There's iReport, 
iReport is like a report card. If you want to understand how a given school or district is doing, iReport gives you kind of that overall information about that school, everything from suspension information to achievement information to financial information. Um, so iReport will be a place you want to look at for that general information about schools. iExplore lets you look across the entire state. So if you want to understand, you know, is my school, um, you know, maybe the, the number of teachers, the experience of teachers, does my school have more experienced teachers than most schools? Or is my school struggling in terms, not struggling, but does my school have less experience in terms of the, um, the experience of teachers? Um, that type of information, if you want to look at across the entire state at all the different schools or all the different districts, you do that through iExplore. So you explore an indicator across all schools in the district. And then iAchieve lets you drill down even more deeply on achievement data. So if you want to look at how your students are growing on the state assessment test from year one year to the next, iAchieve is a good place to do that. And again, we'll go into these uh, with a little bit of a demo in just a quick minute. And we'll also talk about some scenarios of things you, of ways you might want to consider this as a title a coordinator or as a title staff. Um, okay, so accessing iPlatform and those three resources, the easiest thing to do is just to Google NHGOE iPlatform. I think I can, you can even Google iPlatform NH and it'll bring you right to iPlatform. iPlatform then from this webpage, from the department's webpage, lets you get to three things, as I mentioned, I report, I explore, and I, um, I um, achieve. I report, as I mentioned, and I'm gonna, I think I'll just show you these three screens and then we'll just go into it briefly. Um, but I report, as I said earlier, is an overall profile about the school, all three, or a district, all three of these tools um, have the same type of look and feel. You will see a set of tabs at the top of all three of these, I report, um, I, um, I explore, and I achieve. You'll see a bunch of tabs at the top and you can um, navigate from one tab to the next to get different information. So in this, you can see there's information about environment, which includes like suspension, expulsion, information about educators, information about achievement. Um, that's how you get to it by clicking on any one of those tabs. I explore also has tabs across the top, and this allows you to get to different information that lets you explore indicators. So here we're looking at the average class size, and you can look at the average class size for every school in the state. Um, this allows you to say, maybe I only want to look at the North Country, so there's a region area. Maybe I only want to look at a certain um, level of school, so maybe elementary schools. Um, maybe I only want to look at districts. So it lets you vary what you're looking at. And there's a variety of different functions um, that allow you to look at the data in different ways. And then I achieve. Um, it lets you, as I mentioned earlier, again, has tabs across the top, but lets you dive into the information about your student, about your, assess about your assessment system. You know, what percentage of my students are participating in the state assessment test? Are most of my students with me all year? Or do, I, do I have a lot of mobility in my school amongst the students who are taking the test? Um, what uh, type, what does the proficiency and growth of my students look like? What does it look like over time? What does it look like for certain subgroups? So all that information is here within iAchieve. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do now, cause then we're gonna switch over to a couple of other things. Um, I'm gonna actually come, go ahead and do a quick demo for you of those tools. So I'll just spend a few minutes walking you through the iPlatform components. As I pause to go over there, I'm just gonna ask Jacqueline if there's any comments or questions that I need to answer. If not, I'll keep going. There's nothing for you to answer right now. You can keep going. Thank you very much. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, if you want to go to iPlatform, easiest way to do it is to say iPlatform NH in your favorite browser, and you can click on iPlatform, and this brings you right to the iPlatform page on the Northwoods website. Um, and then, you know, maybe sometime in a couple of years from now, you can also just go to chat, um, CBT or whatever the, the chat um, searches are, and just say, write me a grant, um, but not yet. Um, so anyway, uh, here's the way you got the iPlatform. As I mentioned earlier, uh, there's three primary tools you want to look at, iReport, iExplore, and then iAchieve. Uh, we're going to go through them in just that order. So I'll bring you up to iReport. Um, so iReport, again, is this report card. It's for a district or a school. Um, I'll go ahead and let me just pick Concord. Just uh, You can type in a few letters. I can jump right to Concord. Actually, rather than doing a high school, I'm going to do Runlet, which is their middle school. And I'm going to select it. I'm going to click View. And this will bring us to that 
page about Runlet. And so whether you are a title staff and you're going out to a site visit and you want to learn more about the school before you get there, this is a great resource. Or whether you're in a school and you're going to write a grant and you want to get some information for your grant or you want to go look into some measurements that might influence what you apply for, this might be a good tool to do that. Um, so for example, if I want to go to the um, educator page, I can look and get a sense of what percentage of our teachers um, are certified in the area they're teaching. And right here we see for Runlet, it's 100%. Um, that's high. That's not always quite that high. That's great. Um, and their teachers, 93% um, of their teachers are experienced, which is also a fairly high number. Um, we'll talk more later with an example of how you might find how you, how, what you might want to do for your school that doesn't have that, that high level of, um, of uh, teacher experience. Um, achievement. So here, before we, we'll go more into achievement in the I Achieve page, but this gives you some overall information again about how your schools are performing. Um, you can see, for example, um, this school has an ELA proficiency of 38%. So 38% of their students are proficient in English. Um, the target for the state right now is 62%. So that's a quite a bit under where the state's target is. Um, so again, that might influence the need to apply for a grant in that area or give you some justification of why you're applying for a grant uh, focus on ELA. Um, you also can see where you stand compared to the state and the district. So again, as you're thinking about your need for a grant, um, this shows you where the runlet school is in yellow. Um, the district average proficiency for ELA is in light blue, and the state uh, is in green. So we can see here runlet is quite a bit is a little bit below um, the overall district as well as the state um, overall um, proficiency. And if you highlight it, it actually shows you those numbers. So you can see where the, the where it is, and you can see it for each grade. And so here, for example, you can see the you know the school average is forty two, the state average is fifty three for grade six. The school average is forty, the state average is forty six. Um, so again, information that might give you an indication of whether it's an area you want to focus on for a grant. Okay, um, interest of time. I'm not going to go into the rest of this, but you know, it's easy to navigate. You can't break anything. There's no login. Um, so I encourage you to play around with this uh, to find out information about your school. Let's go back to the iPlatform NH and we're gonna take a quick look at iExplore. So iExplore, as I mentioned before, lets you look at information across, uh, an indicator across the entire state. Usually it's pretty responsive, so I apologize it's taking a second here. Um, so I Explore lets you look at indicators across the entire state. So a couple of ways you might want to think about using this as you're thinking about grants and needs and and you know what makes sense. One one thing you can do here is you can just look again to see kind of where you fit compared to the entire state and might realize if you're you know towards the bottom of the state, maybe that's an area you need to focus on, depending on the indicator, of course. Um, so as an example, if I want to look at um, college, let's see, college, no, that's not, let me pick, um, let me pick graduation rate. So you've got your four-year graduation rate. Um, you can actually, um, and we're going to look at just high schools because this really only makes sense for high schools. Um, so if I choose just high schools here and I apply that, we'll just focus on high schools. Um, you can go down to the bottom of this list, move my Zoom stuff here so I can get to it. Um, Um, I can actually go to the bottom of this graph, and if you hover over the middle of the graph, you'll see these three little lines, and you click on that, and that'll sort the graph. And so now I can see here what graduation rate is for your graduation rate for all these schools. So you can look to see where you are, you know, in comparison to the rest of the schools and, you know, realize, you know, here you're Pittsfield High School, you're at 53%. That's a little bit lower than most of your counterparts. That might be an area that you want to focus on. Uh, and you can actually hover it over and see and what, the trend, what the trajectory has been over years. And so you can definitely see where this has kind of gone on a downward slide the past few years, and it might be an area you want to focus on. And I, I apologize ahead of time for any schools that I kind of pick on. Um, there's there's no intention to try to call anyone out. I just want to show you examples. I can find examples for every school in areas that you might want to be improving. Um, but hopefully we can all learn from, learn from these different indicators. So again, one place you might want to go to understand kind of where you sit compared to the entire state and might want to see what your history is over time and use that as an indicator or kind of a, a, 
um, uh, indicator that this is an area you might want to apply for a grant uh, that, that is covered. I'm going to, I'm not going to go through the rest of this again for time for pur pur uh, purposes, but you can compare, which allows you to look at two or three schools at the same time across the state. Um, if you want to look at across all the indicators, um, there's a discover feature that lets you discover. And actually, let me just uh, show you this briefly, um, because I think this could be valuable too, as you're thinking about grants. Discover lets you look for correlations across the state in, in multiple, in two different factors. So you can correlate different information. So for example, I can take um, achievement. So let's take achievement and I'm going to take the proficiency in math. So what percent of students are proficient in math? And I'm going to compare that, excuse me, <clears throat> to something like finance. Let's choose, um, I believe, average cost per people. <clears throat> so what I'm going to, we're going to project here on this. No, this might not have been. In, oh, <clears throat> we don't have data for all the years right now, and so I think I'm, for financial data we don't have yet for 2022. So that's why we didn't. Why it didn't look right. But if I switch to 2021, we can see that 2022 data is going to come out in another couple of weeks uh, for finance finances. But what this is now allowing us to do is compare math to cost per pupil, and so we can see cost per pupil up here goes from lowest cost per pupil to highest cost per pupil. Each one of these dots represents a school. Proficiency goes from lowest to highest. Um, and this is showing us is there a correlation between cost per pupil and um, proficiency. And so not that you're going to necessarily apply for a grant to reduce your cost per pupil, um, but it does give you this concept of this. If you know, maybe, maybe you want to look at a teacher, a a teacher experience or something, it will give you this concept of how important that factor is in, in determining or predicting um, whether the achievement is um, going to be high or low. And I should be very clear, it's not a causation. So it doesn't mean that one causes the next, it just means there's a correlation between the two. So I should be careful when I say predict. Um, it's showing a correlation. In fact, what we're seeing here, though, is that these are not correlated. There's a what's called an R value. You need an R value of like a 0.8, fairly high to be correlated. Um, this is showing you there's not a really correlation, and you can see it, too, if you look at the dots. You've got schools that have very high achievement, with a, a low cost per pupil. So these schools, for example, down here, if I hover over them, the Bridges Academy is an example. You know, this one too is fairly low, um, McKelvey Intermediate School. Um, these are schools that have high class, high uh, cost per pupil um, and also are doing well. So I won't necessarily point them out. Um, but anyway, so one way to look for that correlation, again, something to think about as you're considering what to what you might wanna apply for a grant, for, uh, what would be applicable for a grant. Okay, the last thing I want to do is I'm going to go back one more time and I'm just going to show you the I achieve and we're going to, let me just look at the time. I'm actually going to skip this now. We'll look at this in a few minutes, but I want to make sure we've got time for everything else. So I will get to I achieve, but I'm going to get to it through one of the one of the samples that I give you in a minute. Mike, I do have one question if it's okay to, to please, give it to you right please, now. Please. The question is, where would you be able to find a state average? For example, the state average of students with disabilities. Great question. Okay, so the easy. Oops, I didn't mean to go to that. Let me go back to I platform. The easiest way to do that is if you go to the I report, and actually, let's see what's here. Um, if you see at the bottom under additional resources is NH State, New Hampshire State Report. If you click on this, this will open up I report, the thing we were just looking at, but it'll open up for the state. And so here I can go to any indicator, and I've. Apologize, I remember, I don't remember the one you just mentioned. Um, which one was it, Jacqueline? Did you say, was there one in particular? Um, it was for students with disabilities. Okay, so this is the overall achievement for the entire state. 51% of students in the entire state um, were proficient in English language learning. If I click on this flyout, that's what these arrows are, this will then break that down by subgroup. So now I can see for students with disabilities, 15% of students with disabilities across the state were proficient in English language, um, the English language assessment. Um, so certainly an area that needs um, some support. And you know, to your to the whoever's asking the question, I assume you could go into your school and see what your school was. You can go into the state report and click on that flyout to see what the state is and can do that comparison. You also can probably see it in the I explore where you're looking across ELA across the entire for every school. I think you probably would see it there um, at the state level. Okay, let me go back to the presentation and then again, Jacqueline, uh, cut me off anytime. So, three good areas to get information about the state accountability measures are what we just looked at I report, I explore, I achieve. 
There are some other places to get some information that's very valuable. Um, I want to point out the College Board's website. People, most schools are not doing enough to take advantage of the data and information that's available on the College Board's website for the state assessment test in math and ELA in grade 11. Um, so in addition to getting some general information about how the students are doing overall in math or English, as we just saw on the iPlatform pages for 11th grade, you can go to the College Board site and dive in and get much more detail. You can get information um, based on different types of assessment questions. Um, you can actually open up some released items and see how students did. Um, so I encourage you to use this as another resource. And again, you know, we, we're going to talk more in future sessions about how you define SMART goals and set goals and come up with you know, goals that make sense for you. Um, so I don't have time today to talk that level of detail. Um, but you could, within the College Board website, identify certain areas that students are struggling in the SAT and come up with a SMART goal to say, okay, based on where they are today in this specific area within the SAT, here's where we want to get folks. And then to do that, this grant is going to do X, Y, and Z to see that change for kids who are taking the SAT in this specific area, you know, maybe it's, or maybe it's in science, um, you know, that's an area that schools quite focus on. Um, and you could look at the science results and the science results will come in Cambium. So this next slide talks about the fact that just the way the College Board offers a lot of great insight into the assessment, so does the Cambium site for science in grade 11, as well as math and ELA in grades three through um, three through eight. Um, so this is a site we also encourage you to go to. And again, you can get to you can get the information that goes down to the student level. You can get information at things like integration of knowledge and ideas or craft and structure. And so again, that those are different, you know, most of you probably are familiar with curricular areas in, in the schools, but those are you know more kind of smaller, smaller and more defined areas than just saying English language arts. Um, so these are specific content areas that we're going to focus on in schools. So your title grant, may decide that I want to focus on craft and structure, and this is how we're going to do it. Um, and then this could be an indicator that you would use, and again, talk more at one of these future sessions about setting a goal specifically around craft and structure. Um, so another great resource to find data that you could use as you're thinking about goals and measures around your title grant. The last area that I want to mention is that there is also information at the student level that you can download from the department's I4C website. Um, so I4C is, again, for those of you who aren't familiar, that's the area in the department where you upload student information to the department. It's a secure system, and both Cambium and College Board obviously are secure systems too because they're, they're student level data. Um, but somebody within your school can get into I4C or in your district, and they can download information about your students. In particular, there's a report that's available for um, the superintendent um, that can be downloaded. It's called the Student um, Final Performance Results. And so this report, as we can see here on the right, will allow you to download an Excel sheet that has every record for every student. Um, all this, obviously, in my presentation is de-identified. Um, and it includes information such as um, the student's achievement level in English and math and science uh, includes their, their growth percentile. It includes their overall score. Uh, includes information about the student in terms of the subgroups that student is in. So this information, too, is stuff that is an information that we'll go, we'll go through in a demo or an example in just a minute. Um, but this is another place you might go look to say, um, my, my, as I'm thinking about my grant, an area you might want to focus on is math. These are the students that we're going to be we're focusing on. And this is the, obviously you're not going to put the names of the students in your grant, but this is the tool we're going to use to identify the students that we want to focus on uh, to provide some instruction. As I say that, I also think in my mind, all the title folks are on the call. I know some grants are should be aimed at focusing on certain students. Other grants should be focused on whole school. So obviously you need to understand the parameters of the title grant before you decide whether you're going to be writing a grant that focuses on certain students or focuses on a systemic processes across the entire school. And feel free if the title person wants to add in during this webinar towards the end, feel free to, to clarify that more as well or in the chat session. Okay, so we talked about what accountability measures the state has. Um, hopefully you understand some of those indicators, at least what they are. You may obviously not understand the meaning behind the growth percentile yet, um, but that's information that um, we can help you understand or, or some of those tools that I gave you uh, can help you understand some of those links. Hopefully you understand a little bit more about where you can get some of this data. So what we want to do now is I want to dive into some examples. 
So these are examples as I tried my best to put on my title hat and say, here are some things you might want to think about in terms of the data I just showed you. And so we're actually going to walk through these scenarios. And this, I would love feedback, especially from the title group, uh, the folks who are work for the DOE after the session today. I'd love your feedback on whether this is the you know, type of thing that you think is helpful. We can continue to elaborate on this and maybe even do some short videos or short vignettes on some of these ideas if, if we think these are helpful. Okay. And I hope they are. Um, the first one, let's first scenario, we've, we have been struggling to hire teachers and want to see if we have a large portion of our staff who are teaching out of area, out of the area they're certified. So maybe you have um, some concerns about the, the teaching issues you've had in terms of hiring folks. Maybe you're in a part of the state where you've had some difficulties and you want to get a better understanding of kind of where you sit in terms of teachers being certified for what they're teaching um, and where you sit in time compared to the entire state. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, hopefully most of you are, um, but teachers, although they have they have to be certified in the majority of classes they're teaching, they don't actually have to be certified in the area for every class they're teaching. The state allows some flexibility, knowing that there's not always the ability to hire um, folks who are certified in every area. Um, so, for example, you might be teaching physics for three sessions, but you're also teaching a class in biology because there is a need for the biology. Uh, you didn't have enough biology teachers, and it's an area that you've got some competency and you're just not certified. Um, but you want to understand are your teachers certified in general? So I explore is the place you can do that. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this link and we are gonna jump over to I explore. Sorry, I gotta move my Zoom stuff here again. Um, and right now, I, for this scenario, I'm not gonna necessarily, maybe I will pick out a school in a minute, but in general, the concept is I wanna look at something like um, the percentage of teachers who are certified in the area they're taught. So classes, certified educators and subjects. So this is the percentage of educators, who percentage of classes who are taught by certified educators in the subject. So this is looking at kind of backwards. It's showing us what percentage of teachers are certified. So in, in this place in, in Crosby Kennett Middle School, most of the teachers are certified for the area they're teaching. Um, number High number means most of them are. What I can do down here is I can go down to the bottom, as we mentioned before, and we can sort this. And so what now I can do is say, um, let me look at schools that, you know, see that some schools have much lower percentage of teachers who are certified in the area. And so maybe the, I'm one of these schools down here. And so I'm just again gonna pick on, um, I'm gonna pick on Colebrook. Um, so I click on Colebrook, I can see that it looks like they, you know, back in 2018, they had 87% of their teachers were certified in the area. Maybe they've been having a harder time with, with hiring or something. It seemed like that dropped quite a bit. It went up a little bit, but this is an, you know, might be an indicator for you to say, you know, we're down to 72.85% of our teachers are certified. Maybe I want to look at some grants some professional development grants that might help our teachers get certified so that they're all certified in the areas that are teaching. Maybe that's not an issue. Maybe it's an issue, but it's something that, again, this data might help you identify and it might be an area that you, know, you could then use that information. And again, that, you know, easy to kind of translate that to a SMART goal. If 72% of our teachers are certified in the area today, this is what we want to get to, and this is how we're going to get to it using our grant. So one example of how you might want to consider using these tools to get some data to inform your grants. Let's do another one. We are considering the need to improve math achievement. Um, so maybe you have an idea that math achievement is you're struggling with it a little bit, but you, you know you want to write a grant about it. You don't want to write about just math in general. You want to get some more data to help kind of direct where you're going to be putting your grant. So you're not sure where to focus. So you want to look for trends in our, in your math achievement. So for this example, we're thinking about our math achievement. So our achievement, I achieve is probably the best place to look for achievement data. And so we're going to go there. So we're going to go to I achieve. Let's go back to our main platform page and jump to I achieve. Um, okay. In this case, um, I'm going to pick on a school. So again, I apologize for picking on anyone, but I'm just I just grabbed one to, for this example. So I'm going to pick on Bo. Um, and we're going to choose the Bow School District. And what we're going to look for now is we want to look at proficiency. What percentage of our students are proficient? And we want to look for trends. Is there something different in one grade versus the other? How, what are we looking like over time? And so within this uh, I Achieve is this beautiful, this area called proficiency growth. And there's this really cool um, heat map or map that shows you what in this case, this is showing us uh, assessment proficiency. So what percentage of your students are proficient? In this case, uh, red is green, the uh, red is uh, ELA and blue is math. So we were talking about math. So we want to go down to math. And I'm going to zoom in here a little bit to make it easier for you to see. But this is showing us for each grade, 
what percent were proficient over each year. And so looking at this data, um, there's a few things that I pick out. And uh, so I'm gonna mention a couple of these. Um, one is that if I look, and I just picked this earlier, I just happened to look at, you know, when, and, and looked at some trends, whatever school district you're in, you will most likely see some trends. Um, what I noticed here is that from grades three through eight, if you look in 2022, the percentage of students were proficient were fairly high, 67, 77, but then they're going down 49, 57, 41, 29. So there's kind of a projection, a project trajectory going down. And I, I was looking at one earlier and I thought it was even uh, more significant, but that is something that, you know, maybe it's an indicator what's happening from grade three down to grade eight that's causing us to um, have a lower percentage. And we can see that same thing happen in, in 2021. The other thing that I noticed here is if I look at this cohort, in 2018, the fourth graders had 66% four, of the fourth graders were proficient. Those kids who were fourth graders in 2018 were fifth graders in 2019. And I see that only 43% of them were proficient. Those kids who were fifth graders in 2019, we're gonna skip the COVID year, were seventh graders in 2021, and only 32% of them were proficient. And then if I go down to 2022, in eight, grade eight, 29 of those, 29% of those students were proficient. So those students have been dropping in proficiency over time. Um, so again, thinking about title grants, thinking about grants I might wanna apply for, that might be an indication that I might want to say, I'm a little concerned for that class, that class who's now in ninth grade. And so maybe there's a title grant that you can look for that helps address to make sure that those ninth grade students this year are getting some extra support in math because there seems to be a trend where they were having some trouble from, from 2018 down to 2022. Um, again, I apologize for picking on any districts, but I just want to kind of let you think through, here are some things I might want to look for. Here are some data that might inform a grant that might make sense for my district. Okay, next one, because I know we're running out of time here. Um, I wanna see my school standing and see what groups may be struggling um, in iChieve. So um, again, we're gonna use iChieve to do this. So again, I wanna see my school standing. So when I say school standing, I mean your 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 ESSA, your, your accountability standing. Am I a good standing? Am I a CSI school, an ATS school, a TSI school? So I'm gonna jump to iAchieve. I achieve and I, re I um, report are both places you could go to for this, but I'm going to go to I achieve just because I know it has a little bit more data. Um, it's just it's a, a newer system and I know it has a little more data for the asset determinations. Um, for this example, I am going to choose Hillsborough Deering. So I'm just going to choose another school. Um, and so I can type in Hillsborough. I choose Hillsborough Deering. What was I going to choose here for my example? I'm going to choose the high school. Um, and you've got to click on that link again to minimize that. I'm going to go to the ESSA indicators. And so I'm going to find out, am I a school that's identified? And in fact, you know, I happen to be identified as an ATS school. So an ATS school means that there's some subgroup within my school that's struggling more than you know, my overall school is. Um, this is a high school. And so for here, what we've what I can see down here is there's two main indicators that it looks like have been identified for this school. One is achievement and the other is graduation rate. And so achievement, the overall school is at a 1.95. So 1.95 means it's kind of a rating from one to four. That's showing the average achievement for your students throughout this throughout your school. Um, 1.95, I guess, wasn't low enough to say this overall school is, is, is struggling, although 1.95 means the kids on average really aren't proficient. So even though that's the case, you still might want to help all the, help all the kids. But if I hover over this, it then breaks it down by subgroup. And I apologize, I got to move my Zoom things one more time here just so I can see this. Um, and so you'll see, move again. Um, on the right, if I look at 2022, that last set of um, bar charts on the right, it's hard to see. But what it says the um, um, towards the bottom there for the economically disadvantaged students at 1.35, their, their achievement is 1.35. So economically disadvantaged students are having a struggling more so than the overall population within the school district. If I go to graduation rate, the graduation rate is 81%. But again, if I hover over this, you can see that for economically disadvantaged, it's only 69%. So you've got a lower percentage of economically disadvantaged students who are graduating as opposed to the overall population. Also students with disability, it looks like, is a little bit lower here. Um, so again, one way to get a tool to kind of identify, in this case, identify a subgroup that might be struggling more than other, and then others, and then maybe creating a grant request that focuses on the title one or on the students who are living in poverty um, for this specific area, either of achievement or graduation rate. 
Um, so just one more example that hopefully provides some ideas about how you can use these tools to get data to, to really identify and to make sure you've got an area that you want to focus on. Okay, two more. I've got a few more minutes here. We are concerned about students' behavior. We want to see how our suspension rates have changed. So here we're thinking about suspension rates. So I'm going to do two things. I want to think about how our schools are doing. So I'm going to start with iReport. And for this example, I am going to pick on somebody. I'm going to look at um, Alton Elementary. So I'm going to choose here Alton Elementary. And we're going to view this report. And now we're looking at suspension. So I'm going to jump to the suspension section of iReport. So that's under environment. And we're going to see here that our suspension, we were a school that had about 7.6% of our students who were suspended um, back in 2020. As we see across the entire state during COVID, that went down to zero because everyone was virtual or close to zero. Um, but we see it spiked back up in 2022 to 10.51%. So, you know, this might be an area that we, we might want to watch within our school district. And again, an area that might inform the need for a grant request. Um, if we want to see how we stand to the entire state, then you can actually jump here straight to iExplore. So I click iExplore here and I look at in-school suspension. This is going to open up a tab in iExplore, which lets us look across the entire state. And so here I can actually go and I can um, click on the sort and I can see actually for here, I'm going to say I only want to look at elementary schools. So we're just going to look at elementary schools. Um, and so here I can see, you know, here is where I am, Alton Elementary School. You know, here are where some other schools are. And so I might want to, um, you know, at least it gives me a perspective of where I am compared to other schools, um, all these other schools. So maybe I've got to shrink this again so I can scroll. Or most of them are less than 10%. Um, the other thing you can do is maybe as... Um, as a school, I want to think about other schools that I might want to look at to see where I am compared to them. So I can actually go here uh, under search, and this will allow you to look at where you are compared to other states, other schools in the state. So I can choose in-school suspensions. Um, I'm on one and I say that I know, I happen to know um, that Alton has about 19% of its population is free and reduced. Um, so if I go down and I choose um, economically disadvantaged, um, I can make that another indicator. And then I also know that the population of Alton Elementary is about 400. So I might want to say I want to look for other schools that are um, maybe three, at least 300 students. So you can change these filters and filter. And what I'm doing here is I'm saying I want to try to find a school that's similar to my demographics. And maybe I'll talk to them about things that they've done around suspension so I can inform me as I apply for a title grant. I might want to think about what other schools are doing in that same area. So I know that um, my school has 19% um, of folks who are economically disadvantaged. So I'm gonna actually say, I only wanna look at schools that are similar. So schools that maybe fall in the range of 18, 15 to 25%. Um, and the other thing I can do is I only wanna, I'm, I'm, a K to, I'm a K to eight school. So I'm gonna go down here and there's not an easier way to do this, but I think right now, but I'm only gonna include schools that have um, grades five through eight. Um, so I'm going to make sure that they have at least a five through eight in their category. Because um, I want to look at schools that have a similar uh, similar set of students. I don't want to be considering high schools. I don't want to be considering schools that you know, just have younger grades. I want to make sure they have at least five through eight. So I unselect all these, make sure I got um, nine to 12 unselected. Um, I can apply that. And this will now shrink down the list of schools. And so this search tool, um, Oops, let's shrink this down. Okay. Um, this search tool lets you search across the state and say, okay, here's me, Alton. Here are some other schools with high suspension rates. Here are some schools that have lower suspension rates. They all have a similar economically disadvantaged population. They all have a similar number of students. And so I might want to reach out to some of these schools, maybe with lower um, suspension rates, or maybe I want to reach out to some of these ones with higher and understand what they're doing. It's just a way to kind of reach out to other schools that might inform your grant. Okay, I'm definitely running up on time. So let me give you, I think, one more here, and then we've got a couple of slides that we're going to uh, finish up with. So we've been a we have a strong achievement results, but we want to consider if students are moving between achievement levels in ELA. So here is a question: Maybe you're a school that has strong achievement, so you're doing well, um, but you still want to make sure your students are moving up from level one to level two in achievement, for example. So the best way to do that is to go to I Achieve. That's the, the achievement dashboard. For this example, I'm going to choose Portsmouth. So I'm going to choose Portsmouth Middle School. 
And I appreciate everybody hanging on. We will be done in the next five minutes, um, but just it may take an extra couple of minutes here. Um, so here I'm looking at Portsmouth Middle School. I wanted to look at achievement levels. So I'm looking, going to click on achievement levels here and I achieve. Um, and in this case, what we want to look at is, are our students moving from one level to the next? And I looked at this earlier, so I'm just going to give you, um, jump to kind of what I found. And what I found is if you look at ELA achievement, we can see if you hover over these bars here, this is telling us for the kids who are level two, again, one is the, the lowest, level two is the next, three is higher, et cetera. So level two are kids that are still not proficient. But what we see here when you hover over it, we see the distribution of where the kids were the year before who are now year two, or level two. And so what, we, what you can see is that 14.63%, that's the number there that's in that pop-up, 14.63%, of the students were level one last year, and now they're level two. So that's a great thing. 14% of our students moved up a level. However, the other thing we're seeing is that 39% of our students were level three the year last year and moved down to level two. Um, so really, you know, that, that's an area we might wanna focus on. Why are kids who were doing better the year last year are not doing as well this year in the, in the next grade they're at? Um, so that might be something that we could then target a grant for. This tool also lets you actually um, filter down and say, let me look at the grades. Let me see, you know, so we see here that 39% um, of the kids were level three last year, went down to level two this year, 39%. But let me look at just sixth grade. And so I look, if I just click on sixth grade there, it's going to regenerate this, these graphs. And now we can see if we hover over it, that 48% of the kids were level three last year, moved down to level two. So really sixth grade is an area that I need to be focusing on. If I click on grade seven, we'll see that, um, when it repopulates, we'll see that um, only 20% were level three. So here we had kids stay at level two and some kids move up. So it wasn't quite as bad in sixth grade. And then the last thing is in eighth grade, we'll just let it hover, uh, review it one more time. Um, and this shows us that 46% of the kids who were level three moved down to level two. So it looks like sixth grade and eighth grade are areas that I might wanna target those students. So those are the students who are struggling a little bit more. And so the last thing I'm going to do in terms of this snare to show you data is I just want to show you um, one of the things we mentioned in this, in this presentation, I'm going to back up a few slides, is that in I4C, you can actually download the rosters of students. So the other thing you might not necessarily the grant, you might want to write for the grant, but something you might want to do as part of the, the goal of the grant would be to download that student information. So I'm actually going to switch over to Excel. And I downloaded the information. I hit all the student information, so we're not looking at anything that we shouldn't be. Um, and this is the report that you can download, and it has the achievement level for every student and their score and their growth information. I can actually take this sheet and then just delete these rows. So I'm going to delete these rows. I'm going to um, unmerge them. I'm going to add in a filter. And I'm going to say we wanted to look at third grade students. I'm sorry, sixth grade students and eighth grade students. We wanted to look at students who had an achievement level of uh, two, because those are kids we were gonna focus on. Um, and I wanna sort these students by growth percentile. So I'm actually gonna sort these students ascending. Uh, I gotta unmerge my cells, hold on before I do that. And now I can sort my schools by, this, by the, what's called this growth percentile. And so what this is showing me is here are my sixth and eighth graders who are level two in achievement. And here's the, the ones that have grew very slowly. They struggled the most from last year to this year. Um, so these are students that we might want to focus on. So again, not that you're going to say these are the students, but this is the type of thinking and process that you might want to put into a grant to say, this is how I'm going to find the students that we're going to support this year. And this is what we're going to do to support them. And it's because we found that this was you know, an area that we had kids moving from level three down to level two. Okay, in the interest of time, I will also make the apology that I know I went very fast through all this. The good thing is that this is recorded and we will save this so you can take a look at it in the future. Um, also, there are you know, this PowerPoint presentation you've got access to, uh, and we are here to help. So please, as you're trying to do this stuff, reach out to us and we are absolutely here to help you. And one thing that maybe we'll do is actually throw up some office hours so that following up on these, web, these webinars, you can call in. And so maybe we'll, we'll send out an email about office hours for this as well. So last thing, what's next? Um, 
There are a lot, as I mentioned earlier, there's a series of trainings. These are going to get into things like divining smart goals that I mentioned earlier. There's one on um, uh, using the NHSAS assessment data. Um, so that's going to dive more deeply into the assessment data that we just looked at. Um, and then there are also a whole bunch of webinars that have opened up to the entire state around looking at assessment data. Um, so all of these webinars are available for you. Um, here, I'm going to leave up on our website is our contact information. Uh, please reach out to us anytime. If you don't have know when these webinars are going to get access to them, we can certainly email and uh, let you know how to get more information. You've got my cell phone there, so I am I'm giving that to you because I want you to call if you got, if you need help. Um, so, with that, Jacqueline, let me know if there's any other questions, and I want to appreciate everybody's uh, patience as we went over a few minutes. No, no more questions right now. That was great. Thank you, Mike. Great. Okay. Well, with that, I'm just going to pause for maybe 10 seconds to see if anybody wants to start adding in any chat questions. Um, if not, I appreciate everybody's time, and that's the end of the presentation, so feel free to drop off if you're ready to drop off. Uh, if not, we'll drop off everyone in just a few more minutes or a few more seconds. <laughs>